Praise the Lord. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Champion sharp fire. Shad Ororo, Shad Muzozo, Shad Mafura, Shad Onction. Amen and Amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Glory be to God. I'd like us to invite our friends in our well wishers and let's just spend some time with the Lord and fellowship with him. Praise God. Let's share this broadcast with our friends and then um, then let's just let's just have a discourse. Amen. So let's share this broadcast with our friends. And please let us know if you have shared with your friends. It will be nice to, to have us share this broadcast with our friends. Amen. Let's invite our friends. Let's have a great time with the Holy Spirit. And if you have not done your morning devotion, so this is an opportunity for, for, for you to have a devotion. Thank you, Pastor Iman, for sharing. Thank you, our mama. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's share the broadcast with our friends. Thank you, Dickiness Shelley, for sharing the broadcast. Thank you, Dickiness Joy, for joining us. Praise God forevermore. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord forevermore. I'm excited to be online today. I've not been on Facebook Live for a long while, so it's nice to be online. Sister Casey, it's so nice to have you online. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Please. Let's share this broadcast with our friends. Thank you, Pastor Easy Kings. We love you, sir. 
Amen and amen. Praise God forevermore. All right. So I, I just want to um, talk to us about um, one of the major concerns we have with the Christianity of today, particularly how the church itself is embracing um, certain uh, groups of individuals, and particularly my focus of discourse is on how pastors, a lot of ministers of God, highly celebrated around the world, give their altar, their pulpit to to someone that they themselves have never really taken time to even nurture and uh, properly examine. And I just want to pick somebody like Kanye West. Kanye West is a well-known superstar in the music industry and he made a big name for himself. He's wealthy. But there was a strong wave that came that was just less than two years ago. Kanye West is now a born-again Christian. He's now on fire for Christ. Kanye West is this. Kanye West is that. And then uh, brought in a new music group. And then um, churches across America started inviting him to come and minister. Minister. And I recall I did tell some of my folks then. I said, this guy will flop. And it probably surprised some of them. But I guess those who have known me for a while knew that I really understood um, not only what I was just talking about, but people of his kind. But looking back to date, making, doing a reflection, it's very disappointing to see now that such an individual like Kanye West has gone very, very extreme. Very, very extreme. And not even for God. That's the amazing thing. He did not even go that extreme for God. He went that extreme on the platform of political... Uh, views, ideologies which are heavily selfish. Thank you, Pastor Easy Kings, for sharing this broadcast. It, it's, it's concerning because when you look at someone like Kanye West um, and you see how even pastors, like I said earlier, great men of God were giving him platforms. He will minister and trill the church. Looking back today, it's, it's just embarrassing to see the gullibility of the church. The, the, the church has become so gullible. And I think about the pastors who gave Kanye West a platform to come and minister all in the name of God. And across America, for many, many big churches, Kanye West became the new Bible that many were, were preaching from. They were using him as an example and all that. And of course, truthfully, there are some pastors who used Kanye West to even promote their church. Because, I mean, if Kanye West is coming to your church, a whole popular superstar like that. So, if such a person is coming to your church, I mean, you definitely want to pull the crowd because you, and, and these churches were making publicities across America. And looking back today, it's just a big shame, big shame, big shame 
big shame. So whether Kanye West used the church to promote him, himself, well, some pastors, some ministers in the church also use Kanye West to promote their churches too. And, and I kept telling those around me, this guy is a disaster. This guy will fall. This guy will fall. And and even when I said it to some of the folks around me, it sounded like I hated the guy. I didn't. I just knew this guy. He's a firecracker. And you know one thing about firecrackers is a firecracker. A firecracker is very colorful. Very at, very attractive. Exactly, Pastor Fever, it was very transactional. But you see, Kanye West is... He, when he came into the church world, he, he, he was a firecracker. And you know, one thing about the firecracker is that it is very attractive. Very, very, very attractive. It releases colors. When, he, when, when you see a firecracker, it displays colors. But in less than a minute, it's all gone. And that was who Kaya was. was. And it's unfortunate that the church so embarrassed herself so, so, so much, so much, embarrassed herself so, so much that see what Kanye West has become today. And for those who don't live in America, I think you should just go and find out what Kanye West has been doing lately. And then you wonder, is this the Christian many pastor promoted on their pulpits? You know, the book of Revelations talked about um, how um, the church of Titara, the church of Titara, um, um, the Lord said to the church of Titara, to the angel of the church of I, Titara, which was, when he says the angel of the church, then that means the pastor of the church of Titara. The Lord said to him, I have this thing against you because you have given your platforms, your church platform to Jezebel, to Jezebel to, to teach from. Yeah, 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 Revelations chapter 2. I think you should look at that quickly. Maybe Kanye West gave some of these pastors money. Maybe he did. Because he's a billionaire. So maybe he did. But ah, the Lord is awesome. God is wonderful. God is so wonderful. That he already told the seven churches ahead. These things will happen. So in case you don't know, the things Kanye West did was one of the signs to the end time. If you go to the book of Revelations and see what the Lord said to Titan. I like to read it from verses 18 of Revelations chapter 2. In Revelation chapter 2, verses 18, the Bible says, And to the angel of the church of Titus I write, These things says the Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like brass. That's what I have. And that is why all those pastors, when they were inviting Kanye West, I was telling our folks, I said, this guy will flop. Why? Because as a son of God, I have the eyes like a flame of fire. I knew the guy would not last. I knew the guy was just a firecracker. And see what the Lord said. I know your works, verse 19. Your love, your service, your faith, and your patience. And as for your works, the last are more than the first. You have done very well than when you first began. That's what the Lord was saying. But look at verses 20. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allowed the woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. That was the kind of person Kanye Wells was. He was calling himself a minister of God, a messenger of God. And pastors started saying, you know, 
just like King David. King David came. He came from a mess. He came from this. King David came from a mess. God chose him and announced him. King David did not need to do anything. And you need to understand, when God was announcing King David, King David did not have any talent. I mean, if you want to say Kanye West is like King David because he was into music, King David was not a music superstar. So you see, there is no, there's no reconciliation. King David was not a music superstar. He was singing for animals. Animals don't buy albums. So, animals don't give Grammy Award. But God saw King David in the bushes and picked him and made him king. And even before God did, King David had to kill a Goliath. Which Goliath did Kanye West ever kill? Which one? And it was so disappointing, so shameful to see pastors, pastors, celebrate Kanye West. And if you go and check the videos, if you go on Google or on YouTube, go and check the videos and see the pastors, the pastors who were inviting Kanye West to their pulpit to come and minister. Just too shameful. Tomorrow, a um, few days from now, the guy will be buying a social media where extreme political views are being expressed. The same Kanye West now is criticizing and talking about killing Jews. Wait, wait, wait. Kanye West, you want to kill Jews? The Christianity you profess, do you know where it came from? It came from a Jewish Jesus. And now you want to kill his people. You said, I'm going to bed now. By the time I wake up, I will kill Jews. Now, even if it was a joke, even if that remark was a joke. Do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says we should avoid foolish jestings. This guy was just making, making jest. On the, ah, it's too shameful. Too shameful. I wish I could sit down with some of those pastors who invited Kanye West to their altar to come and preach. To come and preach. People started calling him the radical Christian. Whew! The guy was building political followership. Why is the church that gullible? Why is it? I mean, I thought the church is supposed to have brilliant people. Why are we not that brilliant? Who is Kanye West that a pastor will be giving him his platform? Somebody say, nah, he's the new wave, he's this. Uh, it will not be right for me to mention some of the churches that invited him. Some of the renowned men of God that invited Kanye West. But look at Kanye West today. Look at him tomorrow. You know, when R. Kelly first brought out the song, The Storm Is Over. Oh, it became like a new hymn in all the churches. And I sang it too. Then I was in Nigeria. We all sang it. And... You know, one thing about R. Kelly is that R. Kelly has never, never at any time, never, R. Kelly has never at any time attempted to be what is not in church. He has never, 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 never attempted to say, um, I'm now, he, he did not do half of what Kanye West did. And I still recall, churches were holding conventions. Lambashing R. Kelly. Yet R. Kelly did not say he was a prophet. R. Kelly, all the songs, and interestingly, R. Kelly was someone that I really liked as a person because I can't lie to you, I like music. I like beats. I like music. If you stay around me, you know I like music. I like beats. Maybe if I was not a preacher, I would be a music producer. But I'll tell you truthfully, R. Kelly was someone I followed very well. I followed R. Kelly very well. I was really into music, but I was not, I was not, I was not a music artist. But like I said, I was after recording labels like Motown, Death Row, all those big, big time um, recording labels. I like beats. I like the mixing of sounds and all that. I like it. Like I said, if I'm not preaching, if I was not a preacher, probably I would have been a music producer. Somebody said, maybe you'd have been producing gospel. I don't know, but like I said, I'm a preacher now. 
But the reason why I'm saying this is because R. Kelly was one of my number one artists. If you look at the sequence of how R. Kelly sings, he narrates his story. And he, take, he carries all his fans along at different stages. For instance, if you listen to R. Kelly's song, Heaven I Need a Hug, and you see what is happening to him today, you will know that he already saw what was going to happen to him. If you listen to R. Kelly's song, Heaven I Need a Hug, he already has said what was going to happen to him. He had, it, it looks like he has already seen it. People even talk about Bob Marley. They say Bob Marley was prophetic. The things that are happening today, he sang them in his songs. Peter Torch and many of those folks. But these people never for one day attempt to come to church, to come and stand on the altar and talk about what they don't understand. They don't do it. But Mali till he died, even though people were saying his songs were prophetic, he did not come to church to come and stand on the altar. So Kanye West, what happened? Churches were inviting him, come to our church, come to our church. Like I said, maybe some of those pastors use that platform, use Kanye West to promote their church, the publicity of their church. But if you look at who used who, Today, it looks like Kanye West really used them because he used him, used that platform to build a brand for himself. Come on, man. Few weeks ago, Kanye West wore a t shirt, White Lives Matter. All right, a black man wearing a t shirt that has White Lives Matter. Kanye West. The black folks in America who say black lives matter, they didn't just do it for political uh, purpose. They did it because they were being killed by white police for no reason. So don't just think that coming up with a t-shirt, white lives matter, was a platform to which you can counter black lives matter. The people, actually, who were saying Black Lives Matter, many of their children were being slaughtered. Kanye West, no one has killed your child. And if you are saying White Lives Matter, do you think the black people don't know? But who goes to attack who? That becomes the point. The white police will come into a black neighborhood and kill the people. And when the people protest, to say, look, police, Black lives, we matter. Don't think we are nothing. So, Kanye West, what are you agitating for? White lives matter. We know that. But we want white people, the white lives, to know that black lives also matter. But by the way, Mr. Kanye West, are you not a Christian? I mean, you say you are a, you are a minister of God. When did you start bringing a divide between black and white? I can understand if a woman who lost her child to gun violence by the police says black life matter, even if she's a Christian. We can understand she's going through grief. Kanye West, I thought you said you are unifying everyone. And by the way, by the way, Mr. Kanye West, the people who bought your album the most were not white. The people who really made you popular, Mr. Kanye West, they were not white. The black people really gave you the fame you were. It That brings me to one thing I don't understand about black Americans. And foolishly, Africans. Particularly, many of them who live in America. Um, I, 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 and I say this respectfully, I've never seen... Africans or black people as foolish as Africans who live in America, particularly some majority of them. And I don't get it. I, I don't get it. I really don't get it. when someone who came from Nigeria, for instance, you live in America, you have your citizenship or you have your green card.
at the end of the day, you say because you are a Christian, you are pursuing Christian beliefs. But the Christian beliefs you say you are pursuing is an extreme political view of a white man that does not even like you. I still don't understand it. For the Spanish people, I can, I can try and understand the Spanish because they are neighbors to America. Even though those Spanish people are still trying to understand it. But you will see a preacher in Nigeria. A preacher in Nigeria. The way you will be talking about Joe Biden as an antichrist. And celebrating President Trump as Jesus Christ. And then when Kanye West started going to churches in America to preach, Nigerian preachers were talking about, Oh, Kanye West, Kanye West, he's speaking his mind, he's speaking his mind. Even Timaya, Timaya was someone who was talking about, Kanye West is speaking his mind, people are angry. Timaya, you don't live in America. You don't know what Kanye West has done. See Kanye West today. See the kind of ways today that the churches are celebrated. Why is the church gullible? Why? You know, I'll tell you, brothers and sisters, truthfully, the people who sang R. Kelly's song the most were Christians. Christians sang R. Kelly's songs the most. They sang it in weddings, sang it in birthday parties, sang it in in, in prompts, sang it in so many, in fact, parents, Jose Mary R. Kelly, these are songs for the matured souls, and all that. And I can categorically tell you, every black home in America has one music of R. Kelly in their home. But when R. Kelly was accused of uh, this sex thing, People have not even really confirmed whether it is true. The same people who bought R. Kelly music, Christians, who, who were singing R. Kelly's song, um, You Saved Me, R. Kelly's song, um, The Storm Is Over, R. Kelly's song, Heaven I Need a Hope, they were not the one cursing the guy. He did this. You have not even confirmed yet whether the guy was really guilty. The people say he did this to us, but you have not really confirmed yet. Fine, it is true he's in jail, but the church who used to sing R. Kelly's song, what did the church do for R. Kelly? I believe I can fly. Thank you, Dickie Shelley. We sang that song a lot in Nigeria. A boyfriend will be singing it to a girlfriend who is angry with him. I believe I can touch the sky. If the girl is trying to leave him because he does not have money. I have friends who used to sing those songs to girlfriends who want to leave their boyfriends because they don't have money. But the same people, after using I believe I can fly to win your girlfriend over, you have married her now, you are cursing R. Kelly. These people are cursing R. Kelly. It's, that's why I, I, I don't understand why black Americans... And, and I don't want to say every black American... Because there are some of us who have sense. But predominantly some black Americans, I, I don't understand. The person you celebrate one minute, you are ready to pull the person down. Even white people don't behave that way. White people will still try and see how they can cover their own. But a black person will be the first person to come on TV to shout and say this black person did this thing to the person. And you know that this person you are trying to pull down. Everyone in the community is benefiting from him. Everyone. Exactly, Sister Casey, the council culture is predominantly among black people by black people. And then the foolish Africans in their midst, I don't know whether they are looking for acceptance. Listen, I've been in America for many years now, to the glory of God, as a missionary under the grace of our father, Papa Joshua Aguila, who sent me to America. But I'll tell you truthfully, I have never tried to identify with either white or Spanish people on the grounds of complex. I've done businesses with white people. I have paid white people. I paid them. So white people were under my payroll to the glory of God. But I have never, 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 never tried to win an appeal of a white man. He is not my enemy. White people are not my enemy. But... Whatever even a white man wants to brag about, I have it in excess.
to the glory of God. I'm blessed. And I thank God for the grace of our father, Papa Joshua Ikilo. I'm blessed. I live in a neighborhood where, in fact, this house that you're seeing is in a predominantly white neighborhood. So I live, my neighbors are, my neighbors to the far right are all whites. I have some blacks around, but my neighbors to the far right are whites. I have a lot of whites. And these are top professional government workers for the U.S. government and around. So I have a lot of white people around me. But I have never solicited help on the grounds of complex. Never. And I thank God for our Papa, Papa Joshua Aguila, who teaches, us, who teaches us the word of God. Because, you see, I believe in the champion's vision. We are, we are champions in our ministry. And we're not just champions, we are royal champions. We are royalty. I believe in it. Our Papa is building a world of champions. But I still don't understand why some people, why some people, I, I, believe me, I don't understand what Kanye West is looking for. I think it's power because he has made money. So now he's going for power. But if your pursuit of power, Mr. Kanye West, is at the expense of the black people who lifted you, who promoted your music, because the people who listen to your music, Mr. Kanye West, were blacks, not necessarily whites. White people may have liked your music, but they are not as much as the blacks. And to see today the kind of mockery this guy has brought, even to the church. I'm just thinking about the churches who gave hours and hours and hours of performances to Kanye West on their altar. In the name of God. It's just too disappointing. Too shameful. Today the guy is buying a social media platform. Let's see how many Christians will go on that platform to preach. He's not even buying it for the house of God. He's buying it for himself. It's a free speech. Free news, free speech. All I'm trying to say is this. Listen. Before you invite a superstar to your church to come and preach, vet them. I recall there was one sister who said she was leaving her church here in America. And she was very, very upset with me. Why? Because she wanted to invite someone from Wall Street to come and talk to us about business. How to do business in church. Then I told her, no, we can't do that for now. Is it wrong to invite people from Wall Street, business professionals, to come to your altar, to come and minister? Well, it may not be wrong in your own church, but we don't do that here in America. And this sister was very upset. And she ranted, ranted, and was angry. She came to see me in the house and was very, very upset that she wants to invite a top-notch uh, Wall Street expert to come and talk to us in the church by the time she finished ranting i said ma i said can i speak now she said yes i said can i ask you one question she said go ahead i said um, do you know what i read in school she said i know you read finance i said do you know what i came to america to do you came to work on wall street i said good you know I came to America to work on Wall Street. To work on Wall Street is not for poor people. I'm not a foolish person. I'm good at what I do as a finance expert. I consulted for many big organizations before I came into the ministry. I said, the person you want to invite, do you know how much he makes per hour? I said, do you have an idea? What position does he hold? She told me his position. I said, so Google it. Uh, roughly, estimate how much he makes per annum. She told me the amount. I said, that guy, that guy you wanted to invite, from what you said he makes per annum, approximately, that amount is for people who would have been my PA. So that guy would have been my PA. I would have been his boss if I had taken the offer on Wall Street. I said, so, madam, 
you are inviting even someone who is junior to me on Wall Street to come and teach us how to make money. What does he know? When I would have been his boss on Wall Street. And she said she's leaving the church. A time came, that particular woman started struggling financially. I was the one who invited her. The Lord told me to invite her. I invited her. She came to the house and I wrote her a check. And I said, take. She knelt down. was begging me. I said, Madam, don't need her. Go. Go and meet your Wall Street people who can't help you. Now, the same church you say you wanted to invite someone from Wall Street to come and teach us. I'm the one giving you money. It's too shameful to the pastors, vet which superstar you want to invite. I, I don't get it. I don't really get why you have to invite a music star to come on your altar, to come and preach to God's people. Do you know who God's people are? What, what is he going to tell us? If he's coming to share a testimony of how God saved his life, fine, that's a different thing. But to come and teach us the word, who is he? Somebody who sang for the devil for many years is now coming to teach us the word of God. If the guy is your personal friend, we can understand that he's your personal friend. If the superstar in question is your personal friend, I have some, some big names actually. Privately, who are my personal friends? And we see, we talk sometimes. But I've never, never told them come and preach on our altar. What am I going to tell you to come and preach on our altar for? Some of these Nigerian Nollywood artists, some of them, some of the Nigerian Nollywood actors and actresses, I know some of them privately. Privately. I've never mentioned their name before. I know them privately. Some of them, each time they are entering America, they will call me, I'm in America, I'll say, fine. And sometimes, some of them even send me money, but I've never said, come to our church to come and preach. I know a music producer, one big music producer. He lives in South Africa. He comes to America. He's a, he produces music in Los Angeles, but he lives in South Africa. He's an American who lives in South Africa. He's my very good friend. This church is where he pays his tithe. Champions Royal Assembly, North America, this is where he pays his tithe. Yet he lives in South Africa. Because he's our member. He just only decided to relocate to South Africa. He lives in South Africa, but he still pays tight here. But I've never said, come and share testimony. Come and preach to us. Listen, ministers, let's vet who you are, which superstar you are trying to invite. You know, the band, the band in Nigeria. Hey, the band is not a Christian. The band is not a born again Christian. The band is this, the band is that. Okay. I mean, it's, why does the church make so much noise? Have you not seen a superstar before? And who told you your usher in church cannot be bigger than the badge? Who told you your usher in church? Tomorrow now you will start hearing some pastors invite Bonner Boy to church. Bonner Boy, oh, Bonner Boy is coming to our church. Oh, Bonner Boy is coming to us. <laughs> Bonner Boy wants to come and... Tell us about how God transformed his life. Before long, you start hearing, Bonner boy, Bonner boy, Bonner boy. Meanwhile, these people know exactly what they are doing. They know church people, church people can be fools sometimes. It's sad. You see why the church itself loses its power. It loses, and I've never heard, I've never heard, where a superstar went to a shrine of a voodoo priest to tell a voodoo priest how to do voodoo. Hey you, hey you apprentice to this voodoo priest, I want to teach you how to do voodoo. He, even if, <laughs> even that superstar, when he hears that a voodoo says, a voodoo priest says, come on, come and teach us how to do voodoo, he will run away. But we, past, we pastors in the churches, can you wears, come and preach, come and this, come. See the rubbish the guy is just doing. And nobody is talking about it now. But if a man of God makes one mistake, people will start putting it on the papers. Nobody is really talking about Kanye West anymore. Even the wife in marriage said, ah, I'm not even pretending to be a serious Christian. But this guy, if this is what you are doing, I'm not even doing at all. Let's examine. Must you some assault? 
must do some assault. In Nigeria now, the presidential elections is coming now. Imagine a, a, a Atiku telling a pastor, Atiku, exactly, she divorced him ahead. But uh, imagine Atiku telling a pastor now, coming to your church. I think that pastor will announce it. Nigerian pastor in Nigeria. <laughs> because Atiku will give him money. Come on, man. Let's not rubbish the name of the Lord. We don't seem to show mercy to a Christian brother who makes a mistake. We seem to show mercy to one guy who does not even care about the things of God. I'd like to read one scripture to you and show you how Jesus describes Satan. When Jesus um, asked the disciples, who do men say that I am and all that? Some said you are Elijah. Some said you are John the Baptist. Some said you are Jeremiah. He asked the disciples, whom do you say that I am? Well, Simon Peter said, you are Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. I'd like you to see something Jesus said. Jesus said to him in Matthew chapter 16, when you read from verse 13, Matthew 16 from verse 13. He said, blessed, blessed are thou, Simon, but Jonah." Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father revealed it to you in heaven. Okay. Shortly after that, Jesus began to tell the disciples how he was going to die, how things were going to be challenging for the disciples when he departs. And the Bible says in verses 22, I want you to look at that verses 22. Simon took Jesus and began to reprimand him. Simon reprimanded Jesus. Rebuked Jesus and reprimanded him. Now, I'd like you to see how Jesus said what he said. The Bible says, Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me. For you are not mindful of the things of God, but of the things of men. That's who Kanye West became to me. He became an offense. And I'm just thinking about the pastors who were inviting him to come and preach on their altar. Kanye West today is just a shameful offense. Why? He is not even mindful of the things of God that people thought he was. Notice it was after the things of men. That's who Jesus describes Satan to be. He said Satan is not after things that belong to God. And let me tell you, brothers and sisters, if you are that kind of person, where the things of God don't really, really matter to you, there's only one word we can use to describe you. You are a Satan. Period. And it's without apologies because Jesus said it. Why would Jesus ever refer to Apostle Peter as Satan? Somebody say, no, he was not talking to Satan, to Apostle Peter. He was talking to a spirit behind him. Come on, man, don't be stupid. The Bible says Jesus turned and said to Peter. Peter was not possessed with the demon. In case you don't know. Jesus was always casting out devils. But Jesus called him a Satan. The word Satan means adversary in the Hebrew. And you see that word, the way, the way it is spelled, Satan. That's how it is in the Hebrew. It's the spelling. That was Satan. That spelling you see is not an English spelling. It's a Hebrew word. You see that spelling, S-A-T-A-N. That's the Hebrew spelling. If you check the Hebrew, that's the same way it is spelled. English adopted it. The word, that spelling we call Satan, Satan, is not an English word. It's a Hebrew word. It means adversary. Who is an adversary? One that is not after the things of God. And what was it that Apostle Peter was telling Jesus, that Jesus called him a Satan? Because Apostle Peter was benefiting from Jesus. Jesus was the reason why he was able to catch fish. Jesus gave him a purpose for living. And now Jesus said he's going to die. And he said no. He became selfish. That's who I see Kanye West to be. He ended up a selfish man. See what he's doing today. Making a mockery in America. Even in the political spectrum. It's just a disgrace. It's just, it's just shameful. And this was the same guy churches were inviting, giving their exalted altar to, to.
to minister. Nigeria does the same thing too. Nigeria likes to imitate anything America does. I will not be surprised if American, if Nigerian churches did not invite Kanye West. And some of them can still invite him today. I mean, there are some churches that will not mind inviting President Trump to come and preach for one week. Trump reviver. Jesus Christ is Lord. Trump reviver. One week reviver. Meet us at Ogbe Stadium. Meet us at, at the National Stadium <coughs> in Surulere, Lagos. Trump and Jesus Christ. See you there. It will flood the media houses in Nigeria. And you will see bishops, pastors, general overseers rushing to go and listen to the sermon of President Trump. And I know the sermon he will preach. The election in America was stolen from him. He doesn't mind preaching it anywhere he goes. And then King Jong Un of North Korea is his best friend. He's in love with him. He wrote him letters. He will preach that. And then he, I know one thing he will also say. The host pastor who invited President Trump to Nigeria will tell President Trump will say the pastor begged me to come. So I just said, well, no harm. If you can just give me three million dollars, then I can just come for one week. So that I can fight my case in America here yeah, because they cheated me. It's just too shameful. Churches are doing it everywhere. Maybe it's just sad. Just sad. You can't. Who told you your brother, your member in church, is no more brilliant than the guest? Guest, guest, is no more brilliant than the guest you are invited to come and talk to your people. Who told you you don't have a member who knows more? I believe in the products we have in Champions Royale Assembly. And that is why inviting an outsider to come and talk to us about matters. Who told you we don't have brilliant people in our midst? Why should I invite Kanye West to come and tell us about Jesus Christ? When there are enough sermons about Jesus. The Bible is even there. So is it Kanye West that will preach it to me? Do you know how long I've been a Christian? And, and, and I'm just thinking. I've been a Christian for many years. And Kanye West will come and not tell me about Jesus. He did not attend any Sunday school. He does not even have a pastor. Yet yeah, churches were inviting him, giving him platforms to minister. We have brilliant people in our midst. We don't seem to part. We, it's amazing. Pastors, there are some pastors who don't even believe in the people they lead. There are pastors like that. They don't believe that the people that they are preaching to are brilliant enough to come and exhort us. They don't believe it. And it's just too sad. It's time to change. Let's do better. Let God be proud of us. And let's stop inviting Satan and Jezebel to our churches to come and be preaching. All in the name of porridge. The church in America seems to have sold her birthright to Jacob for a plate of porridge. How much is Kanye West going to give you, pastor? How much? How much is he going to give you? If Kanye West, who never went to church, made it, you, you know God. And you think your God cannot make you richer. You just mock God, Pastor. Let's change. Let's change. Quite frankly, it's just too shameful. And yet, do we, we the same church people. We are the ones criticizing our own Christian brothers. If you hear a pastor had an affair with someone, now you, you will preach it. You will come on social media, Facebook. Hey, how can a man of God be having an affair with a social person? How can a man of God be having an affair? You are crazy. Kanye West came to your church to preach. Is the man of God who had an affair not better than Kanye West? See Kanye West today. It's sad, man. So, I just came, and I believe that I must have been able to open your eyes to a reality here. Let's stop behaving like idiots. And pastors, you have the Holy Spirit. So, why are you behaving like as though Kanye West is the one to make your dream come true? Like I said, I will not be surprised tomorrow if Bonner Boy stops in a church for prayer, it will make the news. Bonner Boy came. You see, one good thing about the Roman Catholic, which is really... An amazement to me. And I, you know, the Roman Catholic today still has the largest congregation in the whole world. It doesn't matter what any church is even saying, any other church. They may say they have 7 billion people. Roman Catholic Church 
has a strong membership of two point something billion people. Every service, every service, the Roman Catholic Church. And one thing about the Roman Catholic Church that they've been able to do, whether it is a president who comes for confession, they don't make it news. A mafia lord can come in privately for confession and people will not know. And the priest will not announce it. Oh, so so person came now for confession. Today, once so Pascal comes to say, I was with I was with Elon Musk yesterday. That's another guy again, that is another issue. I don't know why Americans are surprised that Elon Musk is behaving the way he is behaving. Elon Musk is from South Africa. He's, he's a white guy from South Africa. Go and see what white people did to South Africa. And you think Elon Musk will be moderate. He's not liberal. He came from South Africa. And go and see how white people in South Africa oppress the blacks there. And so because Elon Musk is in America, I don't think he's your friend. He comes from a very, very racial background. There are places in South Africa today that black people cannot buy a property. It's confirmed. It's a reality today. Even if a black person is the president of South Africa, there are lands in South Africa that black people cannot come and buy a property and build a house. In South Africa. It's a confirmed truth. So that Elon Musk came to America and then he's now talking about some of his views and people are shouting, hey, 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 why are you surprised? He came from South Africa. The whites there oppressed the blacks. And America really gave him a platform. But I just advise that he's wise. Because America, they know how to collect what they give you. And they will not look back. Particularly when you are, for, when you are a foreigner, they will tell you go back. We made you rich in the first place. Christians, let's be wise. How many churches today are praying for R. Kelly, yet we sing his songs? How many Christians pray for R. Kelly, yet we sing his songs? Do you know how many Christians who attend Peace Square concert, even here in America and in Nigeria? Peace Square. Christians are the ones who go for the concert. But when the two brothers were separated, how many Christians pray for their union, for their reunification? How many Christians? Why are we like it's It's sad. It's sad. It's sad. It's sad. It's sad. I just believe we can do better. But vet the people you invite to your pulpit. Vet them. Don't say because somebody is a superstar. I'm saying, even if Timaya says, I want to come to your church, say, come. When you come, sit at the back. We are not giving you front seat. Do you know who I am? I'm a superstar. I'm Timaya. And so what? And so what? Do you know who I am? I'm Bonaboy. And so what? And so, and do you know who I am? I'm Davido. Davido what? Because you are Davido, so what? Why should we give you front seat? Who are you? Who are you? You don't know me. I can make you famous. You cannot make me famous. God already did. Who are you to make me famous? I don't get it. Why some churches do those things? I believe that if Kanye West's mother were to be alive today to see what her son became, she would be very ashamed of him. Very, very ashamed of Kanye West. See the way he's attacking Jews with his mouth. That's the same person who once preached Christianity that you invited to your church. Please, just because somebody is a superstar doesn't mean he should have a front seat at your altar. That does not give it. Listen, I'm not being critical of any man of God. I'm just saying, let's vet these people. Because at the end of the day, when they finally bring shame, to themselves, they will mock your God because you invited them to your church. They will always tie you to them. Praise God. I love you all and I hope I did not offend you. But even if I did, I just told you the truth. And um, let, let's consider these things. Let's not mock the name of God. 
God is too precious. God has been good to us. Yeah. Yeah. God has been good to us. Let's be kind to people. And even if we are kind to people, let's still deal with them the way we should. When last did you give your member in your church who has been attending your church for many years the platform to come and even to come and even do opening prayer? You are giving a platform to Kanye West or a music star to come and preach. When a member who attends your church for many years, you have never told him to come and do opening prayer. It's not right. It's not right. Don't think a superstar will make you. A superstar will not make your choice. Like I said, I know some of them privately. I know some of them. I have never asked any of them for money. Some of them send me money without me asking. I don't even ask them. They send me money, they say, pray for me. I say, pray. One of them even told me he is trying to contest. I say, don't do it, you will not win. One told me, he said, well, see, what do you think? I'm trying to contest. I say, you will not win. But thank you for the money. You will not win. <laughs> and he laughed over it. He said, man, you are crazy. I say, you are crazy. You are mad. You don't know who I am. You are telling me, how can you be asking me that kind of question? You know you cannot win. You are not even a good person. Praise God. Praise God. Let's not let people use us to climb. Come on, we are, we are the church of God. Don't let any politician use you to climb. Don't let any superstar use you to build his career. Don't let any superstar use your church as a fan base. You are not his fan base. Come on, man. You may like his song, but that doesn't make your church, your church is fan base. Imagine a music star, he wants to do a concert. And he says, please, can I come to your church and borrow your speakers? You cannot borrow my speakers. These speakers belong to God. They are consecrated. You can't use a consecrated speaker at your musical concert, sir. Go and rent outside. Why would you come to my... So, but you are my friend now. <laughs> well, I've never told this story. There was one superstar who came to America from Nigeria to come and do a musical concert. And they came to meet me if he could use our church hall. I said, are you, you are mad. We used to be in a 10,000 square feet. And the altar was about 56 feet. 53 feet long and 20 something feet wide. So it was a huge altar. And they came, they said, this place is good because of the volume of... I said, you are crazy before you finish. Which superstar is coming to use the Church of God to do a musical concert? And they said, we, we went to this restaurant. The restaurant was too small because of the fans that will come. I said, you are stupid. Don't ever call my phone number again. You are crazy. Don't you know this superstar? I said, I don't care who he is. Don't you know this superstar? He's from Nigeria. He's a big name. I said, it, Waka, it, it will not be well with you. You are crazy. You, you, are, you are a fool. Don't even think of it. That you want to use the altar of God for a foolish Nigerian superstar to come and sing and do a concert. You are mad. So don't ever call this number again. We don't do that here. I'm not against any superstar, but you can't use our mics. Go and meet a voodoo priest. Tell him you want to use his uh, drum for your musical concert. Whether you will not have a demonic running stomach. Let's not let this super, this so-called superstars use church to build fan base. It is true as a Christian, you can be a fan of a superstar. There's no problem with that. There's no problem with that. But don't let him use you because you are his fan. God bless you. I love you. I love you. I've not been on Facebook for a while. The last time I was on Facebook was when one of our sisters was getting married. So, it's good to be live again on Facebook. I love you all. And keep praying for me. And please, don't just invite a fool to your altar to come and minister. Bye-bye. The rest of our life is the best of our life. Shalom, peace. Bye-bye.